Hello everyone. Uh, this is just a quick video to help you understand and deal with the singular matrix problem using Smart PLS3. Uh, some of my students and a lot of other uh, researchers I've come in contact with have had to encounter this problem at some point in time during the course of their data analysis. And I just want to get this out of the way for them, at least to help them going forward and also upcoming uh, scholars that would like to engage in data analysis and may have a similar problem. I did uh, get this problem as well. I had this problem some years back and it was, you know, it actually drove me crazy uh, until I was able to deal with it. So yes, I want to show you quickly uh, how to deal with singular matrix problems and uh, that's just the main purpose of this video. Okay, so right in front of you, you see a model here. It's got um, four constructs, and we've got market organizational culture, market OC, and uh, ad hoc crazy organizational culture, and the client organizational culture. And we want to see how it influences or its relationship with employee satisfaction. Now, bear in mind that we're not going to really estimate this particular model. We just want to deal with the problem of uh, singular metrics, okay? So, because this data is really messed up. This data is really messed up. Just de bear that in mind. So, we're not going to do all the other part. Uh, we just want to deal with the problem of singular metrics. So, I'm going to try to run this model just as it is now, okay? So, we go to calculate go with the traditional PLS uh, algorithm and um, path, yes, you select path, okay, and then you start. There you go, you've got a singular matrix problem. Now, this could occur for several reasons. I'm not gonna go through them, I just double click this, okay, I just double click this, you find out so many other reasons, okay, why you might have this problem. Now, with that, if this problem is not fixed, you, you, you won't be able to run your data. I had this problem with, uh, with the SPSS. You know, when I was using, uh, I used SPSS, and for the, that was when I encountered this problem for the very first time uh, some years ago. Okay, so let's close this and find out what the problem really is and how we can deal with that. Okay, so we go to the main active data and double click on that okay let's see all right so we've got a bunch of uh, measurement items here and uh, we look at the excess courtesies and skewness values and uh, so we can see that some are okay and some are not like for example this one tmot4 Depends on who you cite, but I wouldn't settle for uh, a 3.7. I'll probably delete this one. Okay, but let's not let's look for worst case scenarios first of all. Let's run through all the bunch of the measurement items here, and okay, we can see that worst case scenario falls with MKT4, five, and six. Okay. Let's deal with that first and see where we go. All right, so let's get rid of, let's say we start from MKT6. Okay, let's get rid of MKT6 in the model, if it's there. Okay, I didn't include that. Okay, I'll just go back to the next one. Let's go to MKT5. Okay, MKT5, I think I just spotted that. Okay, that's it. So I get rid of MKT5. So you've got two options, you know, amongst others, of course. Um, if we, before we delete, we go back to this particular uh, data, okay? And you check for the sample size. The sample size could be too small. Like you can see, I've got just 99 cases. It's really small. Uh, yeah, the data is messed up in any case. So, yeah. Uh, you could consider increasing the sample size. That means going for more data collection. Yeah, that could be another task there. So, um, or you could go check for missing values as well. That could be another issue, but I've got no missing values in this case. Then another thing to uh, check is 
data uh, indicator items that are very highly correlated, okay? And um, in this case, we can say four, five, and six are most likely problematic. So we get rid of five, MKT5, and see where we go with that. So goodbye, MKT5, your candidate for deletion. All right, let's run and see where we go. Hopefully it runs successfully. There you go. Yeah, we go through that huddle. And that's it, guys. That's just it. That's just it. You could also consider deleting the construct entirely, you know, but it could be risky because you might run the risk of losing uh, relevant information. So it's best you go way down to the measurement item stage or uh, indicator item stage and try to sort out which item is, you know, is a candidate for deletion. I'll probably go again, you know, to make my model make sense. I'll probably go again to delete more of these uh, indicator items that seem to be, you know, problematic. They're quite high. The SS characteristics is quite high. And um, even though you find a, a reliable, credible source to cite to support your, your uh, keeping of this particular item, it may not be the best, you know, because of uh, reliability, validity concerns you might need to deal with later on. But at the moment, for the sake of, or for the purpose of this particular uh, video, this is just what you should handle or deal with. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, please like and subscribe to this channel. And uh, I look forward to getting you more of these kinds of videos. Thank you. Bye.